little video today from the canoe in the pond. I just put in a solar powered pond aerator to overwinter my trout. And I did it very, very cheap with very simple components. Let me tell you about it. So currently my pond is three eighths of an acre in size and it's about half done. I'd like to go up to the three quarter acre area that I have. So as people need more clay, I just keep on digging. So it's been two and a half or three years now digging this pond. At the deepest point where I put the aerator is 12 feet. And um, on average, it's like four to five feet only. I haven't added any water. So that's just runoff. We had a lot of rain in June and then not so much all summer and fall. And I don't want to add water because I got a lot more digging to do over there. But I put in 200 fingerlings. Actually, first of all, it, last year I raised brook trout in the greenhouse in an aquaponic setup. And I released a few of them, 20 of them or so, into the pond last summer. I caught a few of them and then I left a few in there. This spring, to my surprise, I'm looking at the pond and a fish jumps. So with no food all winter and no aeration, now mind you it was a mild winter last winter, the brook trout survived. I even caught some uh, fishing this summer. So on top of the brook trout, which got to be quite large actually so far, I put in 200 trout fingerlings from two different um, hatcheries I got them from, local hatcheries, and put them in the pond. They are flourishing. My water is crystal clear. I have water beetles, snails, uh, natural weeds have come in. River willows are kind of growing and cattails along the perimeter, and it's kind of made its own ecosystem. It's not nearly as deep as it's gonna be, the water could come up another 10 vertical feet and I would be like 15, 20 feet on average and 30-ish feet almost at my deepest there, that jerry can, which is a new jerry can that I'm using as a buoy for the diffuser of the aerator. So to overwinter fish properly, the amount of fish that I put in, I built myself a solar aerator a 450 watt solar panel that i have stored uh, i bought a few years ago and i put that on a single six by six post i made it adjustable so this is ready for my winter angle no snow is it going to accumulate and i can adjust it for the summer angle in that coleman cooler back there is a 140 amp hour uh, agm battery that I purchase used, they're from cell phone towers. I get those for $99 plus a $50 core. How much lifespan it has on it yet, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but for that price, 99 bucks, I think they're 125 with inflation now. Um, to replace it, you take the core in and get a new one. In a Coleman cooler, fit the battery. And then off Amazon, I purchased, it was under $20, a charge controller that was big enough to handle the PV input of 450 watts. I think it does 750 watts, so more than I need. Has an on-off switch for the load. And then I got a 68 liter per, per hour DC pump that's also in the Coleman cooler. And I have uh, a bung open so it can draw air from somewhere. Uh, did quick connects to the outside for a positive and negative PV uh, solar input and then a uh, quick connect for the weighted airline. So off Amazon, I had to buy 100 feet of weighted airline, I think was 90 bucks. I think that pump was about 70 bucks. I'm not sure how long it's gonna last for a pump that cheap and a DC pump. Some people say go to AC, but uh, I wanted to go, uh, I didn't wanna invert the electricity, so I wanted it to stay DC. The charge controller, yeah, 20 bucks. Coleman cooler I had, AGM battery, I said 99 plus a $50 core. 
Post I had laying around, two pieces of six by six and a metal frame for the solar panel I had laying around. I collect all of the MC4 and 10 gauge wiring. So I have all that already. And then at the bottom of the pond is the diffuser that I also just purchased off Amazon, a pond diffuser. So I was looking, uh, the, the pump might be a little undersized, 68 liters per minute. Um, I saw a few that were 90 liters per minute, but it pulled a little bit more watts. So my setup, the 140 amp hour AGM battery, I only want to draw to 50% tops. So I calculated it. the system's going to run 24-7, 365. That when the battery's fully charged, it can run for 24 hours straight and only get to 50%. Now, even on a cloudy day, like extremely overcast or a blizzardy day, the solar panel still picks up some energy. So I think it's the perfect size to have 24 hours of that pump running to only take the battery down to half. You don't want to drain those batteries all the way down. So pump aerators, whether it's a windmill that has moving parts and you have problems with that, maybe some of this stuff's more higher quality. You can get an AC pump aerator. Um, you can get some bigger DC pump aerators as well. But this is going to suit my needs. The 90 liter per minute pump that I was looking at was advertised for a quarter acre pond, which is a little smaller than mine, but it's, mine's not that deep. And I'm just aerating the, the one side of the pond here, um, the deepest part that's 12 feet deep. So that's what it looks like. Now, kids will, my kids will wander. Um, we'd actually, actually the bank is, is so steep when the pond's this low, I haven't added water and we're still kind of in a drought cycle here. Um, we'd go tobogganing down. So in the winter time, We'll see if this actually freezes over with that pond aerator going. I think it might when it gets to like minus 40, possibly freeze over, but then the ice might break apart or it might not freeze at all. Either way, it's going to be thin ice and I have to be careful with kids at this spot. So I put it to one side of the pond. That I think is where the fish are going to congregate. So I have 200 fish. We've fished out maybe 25 of them just... Uh, you literally throw a line with any hook you want on it and the kids catch them. <laughs> and I catch about seven or eight at a time so we can put them in the smoker, or fillet them and have a really hearty supper. The fish taste great. Uh, the water uh, temperature didn't get up that the fish are harmed anyway. Over the entire winter, I found one fish floating on the edge uh, so one casualty from whatever natural causes or whatever cause, the rest of the fish are flourishing. Now, when I catch them, they are, I check their bellies and inside their stomach is water beetles, uh, snails. It's like a slug in a snail. Those showed up, like how this stuff shows up out of solid clay is beyond me. Um, but their bellies are full of natural bugs and stuff like that. Now, on top of that, I give them every kind of day or other day, a yogurt sized container of floating fish food. So for the entire summer, I've gone through two bags, I guess, and I probably overfeeding them. I mean, they're, they're all over a pound and some close to two pounds and they taste very, very well, good. They're not muddy or you get any slew smell or taste eating them. So I've filleted them, fried them in butter, just with uh, just butter and salt to see what they taste like, tasted great. Uh, lemon pepper, we did uh, beer battered fish and chips. I've smoked the whole fish, that was excellent. You kind of make a kipper out of the trout. It's called, uh, we've done them on the barbecue with butter and onions, that's been very good. Uh, what else? Yeah, any way you can think of fish. Kids love it, um, love eating it. It's a very good protein source. So for the 200 fish I have in here, let's say if they're all just a pound, 
or a pound and a half, which was actually pretty good eating size for a trout. That's 300-ish pounds plus, I would say, of trout in here, protein. So that's a lot of meals for my family for, for the year, right? Now, the other thing about trout is they do not reproduce in a pond environment. And, but trout are the best feed per meat that you get out of it. It's a soft meat. Uh, our wild fish that we have here, like walleye um, and perch, they have lots of bones. Uh, what do you call it? It's, a, it's like a harder fish or something, a wild fish. Now, you're not allowed to put any other fish here, uh, a wild fish in a pond. If you did put walleye in a pond, they will not reproduce in a pond environment. I think they need a bigger body of water. If you put pike in here, the pike would kill everything until there'd just be a couple pike left. If you put perch in here, the perch are going to flourish and you're going to have a whole bunch of little four inch tiny perch. So in Saskatchewan, there's uh, little ponds and lakes that have perch in and they don't get big because they reproduce at such a small size. You get a whole bunch of perch. So if perch were introduced in here or a pelican brought a perch in or something, I mean, we've had blue herons and fisher birds and ducks and geese coming in here. And I think that they literally like poop out seeds for river willows and different natural things that I didn't introduce, but with a body of water, the ecosystem naturally does its thing. And I'm just there to, you know, initially build the big hole and then manage it um, as best I can. But nature kind of takes its course and it's been working great. So, but the pond aerator, so I just literally finished installing that, is working fantastic. I mean, so far I just did it. So we will see. And again, last winter was a mild winter, but I did have fish survive. No food from me and no aeration, and they were perfectly fine. Isn't that crazy? So now with aeration and possibly um, well, I have more fish. I'm going to fish out another 50 or so. We'll just have meals over the next month until the ice comes. Um, and I do actually have a net too. So I was considering netting out 100 or 150 and just overwintering 50, see what happens. But I think I'm going to try over overwintering 100 of them. And I will be able to feed them because the ice won't break. I'm going to switch from a floating feed to a sinking feed and um, just throw it in there and give them a little extra just in case there's not enough bugs in ecosystem because I'm not deep as deep as I want to be. I've got a lot of water uh, level to bring up. Now, I, my well is so good, I could actually fill this up no problem with our well and bring that up but I'm pretty sure I'm at water table because the minimal rain that we've had in this drought is uh, this is kind of the water table so and I don't want to put too much water because I still have digging to do I would like the pond to be twice the size yet um, everybody wants pure road building clay it's the best stuff for building roads yard sites infrastructure so the odd guys taken 1,500 yards or 2,000 yards. One guy took 3,000 yards of clay and they appreciate it. I give it away for free. And so this pond did not cost me very much. If you wanted to just hire trucks and an excavator and things to dig a pond this size, uh, just to dig it and you have to pay to haul away the clay, I'd say 100,000 bucks to do this pond. I did not spend even a fraction of that. And I help people out by giving them clay. And I have a water source for our farm and beautiful fish protein and a beautiful place to hang out. And I'm in my canoe right now. It's kind of nice. So kids have little kayaks. They're fishing to their heart's content. At age five, they can cast, or actually my twins are four years old. They can cast halfway across the pond, catch a fish every time. And I just have to man the net and uh, fix their fishing rods for them all the time. So life is good. Living the dream. 
and uh, just takes time. You know, I've been at this pond for two and a half, three years, kind of as things come. Yeah, you need some clay. I got some clay kind of thing. And over the next course of the next three years, hopefully I have this sucker up to three quarters of an acre. And then I really got a natural ecosystem to the point where I probably don't have to feed additional commercial fish feed at all. Actually, right now, there's so many bugs and water beetles and snails and things that if I stopped feeding the fish, they'd probably have enough food source um, without me feeding them because it's big enough to make its own ecosystem. What else can I tell you? One more thing, a uh, little tiny bit of algae on the top when we had like four days in a row, scorching hot and zero wind, which is kind of awkward. But when you get the body of water big enough, the a little bit of wind comes and it kind of breaks the surface. That really, really helps. No algae. I didn't put any pond dye or additives or nothing. We don't use any chemicals on our farm. And the farm is a long ways away from... Um, uh, agriculture field runoff of all the glyphosate and crap that they spray on your food that you eat. Um, so I just have natural pasture. Now there is cattle and stuff uh, in the pasture and livestock way up there. So maybe a little bit of the nutrients off of their manure. But again, I don't overpopulate my farm animals and livestock. So it's kind of most of that's going to go into the soil and fertilize the soil and stuff like that. But yeah, so no algae, few weeds in spots, natural weeds that came in. It must have came in with a wild duck or something because I didn't introduce it. And so with this very cheap aerator that I did, these fish are going to have no problem lasting all winter. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, Catch you next time. I'm going to go paddle around.